is the, uh, the building of the funicular railway at uh, Glassford in the Shed. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to build it over here. Uh, there will be a hill, I have to make a hill here. And then the funicular railway will go to the top of the hill. That's the intention. So uh, we'll get cracking. So to start with, I've built this uh, platform which is supported above the tracks, above the lower level tracks there, on two pieces of uh, four by one. And uh, I'm going to leave it so that it's uh, loose and I can lift it off if necessary. But um, in the meantime, if I do need to grab anything in there, then I, then I use uh, my trusty grabbing tool. Very handy, and I can get underneath the uh, underneath there and grab what I, what I want. Now, on a funicular railway or the ones I've seen, the uh, two coaches pass very, very close together. So I've tested it out, and uh, two tracks, and there's just enough room there for them to pass. And this is uh, three inches wide, so that will go up there somehow like that to carry the funicular rails. So I still have my track running along the, the seaside there and these two going down onto the lower level. Well this project is a little bit too big to have on my workbench upstairs so I've had permission from the boss. Haven't I Mandy? Hmm? Had permission from the boss? Yes. To use the dining room table. Thank yes, you. you want that recorded for posterity view. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so here we have it, uh, collecting the bits together. There's the board that the tracks will run on. I've painted that uh, a dark, very dark grey. Um, and here, um, multi controller, uh, the motor with the gearbox or gears there. And then I bought a load of um, bits and pieces of pulley wheels, gear wheels, out of which I hope I will find the ones to do the drive from there to the ropes that pull the cars up and down. Uh, now we get started with the building the hill. I was to do the uh, wood cutting and stuff. I, I've come out into the garage away from the uh, dining room table and uh, that's the former for the hill on the dead side and this is where the tracks will go here uh, the existing tracks and that's the former which will be a, a continuous of the continuation of the white cliffs of dover that i've got upstairs already and now i have to decide where the ramp will go and how high uh, and then the uh, tracks will go on there so it's uh, it's coming on Okay, now I've got the two formers in either side of the channel that the track's going to run up. And this former on the outside here, I've left leaning in a little bit so that that's the face of the cliffs. And uh, at the moment this is loose because I have to uh, mount the motor and everything up there. Oh, it's coming on. Okay, I've moved back indoors again. And uh, there are the tracks laying in the in the groove, which will be in the in the hillside there. They're lying, lying loose at the moment. Well, what I'm hoping to do, I hope it will work, is that the cable will come up here round that pulley, round the big pulley, back round that pulley and back down to the other tr uh, trolley. And the reason I'm doing that is to get as much um, s surface contact round the big pulley as I possibly can. If it doesn't work, we'll have to work in a, uh, another way. I managed to get hold of these uh, two little bogies matching and they're quite heavy 
which is a good thing. And of course they'll go on the track there and hopefully run down a lot slower than that. But of course they're not attached to anything at the moment. So we're making progress and uh, show you the next stage shortly. Oh, well, I've mounted the motor and gears onto that little block and <coughs> and fixed the block to the end of the board here. And now I've got to put the, uh, the pulley wheels on. I've been doing some experimenting and I was delighted to discover that if I wrap the cable around the pulley twice instead of just once, I get all the friction I need and by reversing it. So the next job is to start putting um, formers for the landscaping and uh, when I've got a bit further with that I'll, uh, I'll show you how I've gone on. I need cardboard now for the scenery or the base of the scenery and after all the cardboard that we throw away we haven't got any left so I had to go down to the tip I do a bit of tatting and the bloke at the tip very kindly fished that nice big cardboard box out for me so that's what I'm going to be using. So I've cut myself a few strips of cardboard and now let the fun begin. Oh, it's taking, taking shape. Right well I'm just about to start putting the base of the foundation of the uh, scenery on. I've cut myself loads of um, plaster Paris bandage. I have my water ready and I'm going to get started. Right, well I'm just about to start putting the base of the foundation of the uh, scenery on. I've cut myself loads of um, plaster Paris bandage. I have my water ready and I'm going to get started. Well that's the uh, first layer on and down the side here I've smoothed it out a little bit and left a few creases in it uh, because those are the White Cliffs of Dover or continuation thereof. Oh, it's coming on. Well that's about it for part uh, one of the building of the funicular and in part two, I'll show you why I haven't bothered to smooth out the little hole, the little pinholes in the uh, plaster of Paris bandage. I do that with a product from the tumble dryer. So uh, I'll see you next time in part two. Well, uh, that's it for part one, and uh, I hope you'll come back and see part two and probably part three as well when I finish all the little bits off and uh, complete the scenery. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time, hopefully. And now I used to have a boat and on the boat I had that note up and it says whiskey time aboard daily 7 o'clock until 6.59. So uh, I think it's time for a whiskey. Good night. And cheers.